Peace. Bam. Happy now. Now is the vibe rate. What rate are you vibing on? Are you vibing on the now rate? <laughs> Peace, y'all. <laughs> Just trying to trying to make myself sound philosophical and be facetious at the same time. Peace and blessings, y'all. Uh, Want to speak on the blue moon? Matter of fact, right now is it's not a good time to be like, uh, well, you know, uh, I do this. Whenever the moon turn blue, like you'll see me do this every blue moon. Well, guess what, y'all? It's a blue moon coming. So all those things that you be saying that you do every blue moon, <laughs> you' about to be doing it. <laughs> Which I'm being a little facetious, but to a certain extent, uh, it, that energy is personified, though. But uh, got this blue moon coming, uh, January thirty first, two thousand eighteen. And it's a blue moon because uh, you only really get one full moon each month. So whenever a second uh, full moon comes within the same month, that second full moon is known as the blue moon. And matter of fact, and what's funny, even though this this is called a blue moon for that, but then it's also a, a red uh, moon or blood moon because of the uh, because of also it being a lunar eclipse. And so it's gonna have that red uh, look from the light from the sun, you know what I'm saying? So it's also, so it has the red look to it and uh, red energy to it, but it's also called the blue moon. So just, I know people may be getting confused about that. Like, all right, how's a blue moon, but it's a blood moon and a lot of different little aspects, you know? And which too, you know, little things like that I tell people, you know, they ain't all that important. Just knowing what the energy behind it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you'll get the particulars and the download in your mind later on, you know. Your spirit guides will give you a little aha moment to be like, oh, all right, that's what that meant. You know, so you don't have to speculate on that, about the color of it. Just, we need to know about the energies that's coming in with that. Now, first and foremost, I want to bring up, just to start off, if you've been dealing because I, I, I had to catch myself, I'm like, whoa, and then I came across a video that let me know. But if your shadow self has been coming out on a level like it was whenever those eclipses, you remember that August uh, eclipse, uh, August 2017 that just passed, you know, where it was a fiery eclipse, it was dealing with that Leo energy and I think the Aries energy, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, that, uh, that solar eclipse uh, in August, you know, matter of fact, this this blue moon, this lunar eclipse, is basically like a like a final chapter, a finalization of those uh, eclipses eclipses that came previously. But basically, the eclipse uh, from August, you know, those energies is stemming within this one. So, again, don't panic if you find yourself uh, being in your shadow self. Like matter of fact, I call myself getting the munches, like, cause I work I. I've worked this, uh, uh, like I said, I worked this out of myself lately, and so when it came back, I'm like, my God, I'm like, where does these munches, you know, where it's coming from? And then as soon as I go to my videos, there's a blue moon, I'm like, oh, all right, yeah, you know, and then end up seeing about that. But uh, again, if your shadow self is coming out on that level like it was during the uh, solar eclipse in August, do not panic, because what's happening is it's a... Uh, it's resurfer it's resurfacing it's a uh, resurfacing for uh how can i say that final transmutation so basically uh say for instance one of my one of my sh uh, other shadow aspects is money management you know being bad uh you know previously being bad you know i'm good with money now but uh <laughs> You know, money management was uh, was kind of horrible with my shadow self. You know, that would come out, in which that reared its, its little head out a little bit too. You know, uh, but again, it's just rearing its head out to show like, all right, the remaining aspects are still in you, and this is something that you really want to get rid of. So you know, just showing you, all right, this one of those little last things. You know, 
and two you'll feel that even though the feeling of it pops up strong like uh during those previous uh eclipse especially the the solar one even though that feeling pops up it's also like a a, a soothing feeling of like yeah it will change now like like it won't linger like for that eclipse like how it lingered until we worked our way through it uh basically this one is more of just kind of like you know like like somebody flash the light on on something and then hurry up and turn it off just kind of showing you you know i write these these last little areas to clean up but it's showing you and telling you but we're gonna help you clean it up you know uh, as well you know and uh help you get rid of these energies but if you see that shadow self popped up like how it was in in august uh for the soul eclipse do not panic because i swear like uh for me matter of fact i don't use that word anymore. <laughs> and which another thing too but it doesn't matter i'm not gonna figure out oh, i use the word swear oh my goodness it is what it is but anyway <laughs> the shadow self uh Again, that aspect is uh, very important for us to transmute and be the person that we want. It's like that uh, that contrast, like uh, how Abraham Hicks always bring up, like, you know, be thankful and grateful for the contrast, like those situations that quote unquote go wrong or that you may not like because those are the situations that made you launch a stronger rocket of desire towards what you love, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like the resistance that makes stronger, you know, like... Uh, you know, dealing with the shadow self is just that rubber band being pulled pulled back so you could see yourself, you know, see what you want to change. Bam, and then when you let that, you know, the further, you know, the more of your shadow self you see, the more it's like, all right, I don't want that. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. And, and bam, you're blasting off the other way away from those shadow aspects that you don't want to deal with. But, uh... It's definitely going to be dealing with getting, you know, uh, finalizing those uh, energies, finalizing the uh, getting rid of those energies, you know, and the finalization of getting rid of those energies. Now, uh, it's a blue moon in the constellation of Leo, which is no coincidence. That Lyran energy, you know, that Leonis, you know, uh, which... Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure you heard other aspects of the Aryans, but, uh, you know, Lyra is around that area where the Ar Ar Aryan or area star is. And let me not go uh, off on that, but the uh, full moon deals with the Leo aspect. So the Leo energy is going to be with that, that joyous kid-like energy. Also, uh, connection with the heart chakra, because even though the Leo is a connection to the sun, you know, it's uh, also a connection with the with the heart chakra as well. You know, in fact, unconditional love. You know, Rastafari, one love. You know, is the Lion of Judah. You know, <laughs> the Lion of Judah also deals with the uh, the Star of David. You know, or the uh, Star Tetrahedron, and the Star Tetrahedron is the shape that goes with the heart chakra. No coincidence. So the heart chakra and the Star Tetrahedron. You know that energy. You know, uh, dealing with the Leo energy. It's coming from that heart space and being like that joyous little kid about it, you know. And also uh, realizing that it's okay to, to feel. Like, it's all right to feel. It's all right to, uh, you know, because also to uh, have that divine feminine uh, connection, you know, and deal with the emotions. Because, matter of fact, with another thing about blue moons, I'm sorry uh, about that. Not the blue moon, but with it being a super moon, because it's also a super moon. So not only it's a blue moon from it being uh, the second full moon in one month, it's also a, a, a lunar eclipse, as well as it being a, a super moon because of how close it is to us. And with a, a super moon, with it being close, that means the energy is a little more stronger, you know? because the energy is kind of closer so it's closer up on us so it's gonna be more stronger a more stronger uh, emotional felt moon you know it's gonna definitely deal with our emotions but not just off of the aspect of it just being the moon again dealing with the divine feminine energy that's moving in because uh, with this uh with this full moon with this blue moon we're gonna see that divine feminine energy be uh moved in 
on a global scale, you know, all over the world, you're gonna start seeing the 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 women rise up on all levels and just that energy rise up. And and I always speak on this too, uh, where is is about the divine feminine rising up in order to create balance. You know, it's not that all right, going back to the wop side of things of just where you know all right, women's are the complete controllers of everything and men are just slaves you know no and which it never was like that before it was just the man's ego that felt some kind of way and so that's why they they did what they did you know what i'm saying but they never was a slave to uh, uh female energy in essence it's just that that masculine ego left brain logic energy you know uh that ego couldn't handle you know something being more stronger quote unquote than it but anyway uh <laughs> what was i yeah the divine uh feminine so it's about restoring bringing back the divine feminine so it could balance and also for the men we bringing in this divine feminine energy within our being but while still remaining masculine and matter of fact which uh that's what i had to learn upon upon my growth where i got too much in the divine feminine to why I, I lost uh too much of my masculinity and the, the queens feel that, you know what I'm saying? The queens feel that level of masculinity within our vibration in order, uh, like on a attraction, you know, level, things of this nature. So, you know, in order to uh, attract, you know, that, that opposite, you know, that, that queen on a, on a male level, you know, you wanna, uh, you wanna make sure, yes, you're, you're dealing with the divine feminine energy and embodying it, but not to the point of getting rid of your masculinity. Because of course, you know, you still have to be a man. That's the balance of the universe. Everything has gender. We just, and two, that's where you realize that it's no black and white. Like, oh, it's just, we just gotta do it just like this. No, it's a balance. We're bringing it in first, you know, strongly, because it has to be brought in strongly, because of how strongly it's been absent you know what i'm saying so the divine feminine is going to come in strong and then as it comes in strong it's going to kind of get like that little buffering where it's going to blend in and the masculine is going to come become not just masculine but divine as, as well you know what i'm saying and they're going to blend in perfectly you know but which all this takes time you know uh things are not uh built overnight to a certain extent you know sometimes in this physical realm it takes a little quote-unquote time you know? but hey we got nothing but it that's why we came here you know ruled by Kronos or Saturn that time and them boundaries <laughs> but uh yeah definitely the divine feminine energy is moving in very strongly uh dealing with this energy and also within your own reflection you know again bringing it in within your own being also, this uh, blue moon is going to help us deal with a lot of uh, emotional healing, you know, healing old, old wounds, you know, old wounds that may still be, you know, quote unquote, haunting us, all that we haven't got, uh, got away from. We're going to be allowed to, to heal, you know, and transmute that energy, you know, because matter of fact, without going too deep, because that's another thing was happening with uh, where you see the uh, government turned something spiritual into something wicked where like where they trying to make it seem like uh, pedophiles are like uh, like victims on a level where you know like where they're not where they shouldn't be seen as somebody who did something wrong and it's like nah that, that's crazy but it is true on a spiritual level though where the way we transmute each other's energies is to forgive because remember we are in a physical matrix playing a playing a, a game in a physical matrix so that that person uh you know who was the pedophile or the rapist or whatever whatever you know they signed up to be you know in this play like all right because say if you think about it like when we're going to play roles in a movie but nobody want to be the bad guy you know you know we we got lucky enough to like all right we got the good guy roles you know but those people had you know was brave enough or had you know or had had to sign up for the bad guy role so with that being said you know you want to send some uh transmuting love love energy to their souls not to the aspect of pedophilia and raping somebody that on a physical 
level is extremely uh, malicious and wrong on the level of you know dealing with us on a human physical moralistical existence you know what I'm saying that's another thing too is so many levels to to universe because yes we exist on the human level but it's also that aspect of yes like uh that that pedophile is not just a pedophile it's an actual star being just like us you know what i'm saying that's playing a role in this movie as well as us you know what i'm saying so don't forget that so of course you want to uh send those vibrations of forgiveness you know to transmute that energy not on no level where you uh supporting pedophilia you're supporting uh you know rape and things of this nature but just giving love energy to help transmute to help them remember like hey blessings you you're just playing a little role in this movie don't take it to heart don't don't let your heart outweigh the uh the feather on the scale remember you you know i hurry up and got the good role and you you had to take that role or however the case may be you know you you chose that role it's cool though but it's a role you chose so don't don't kill yourself over it. Because what's wrong in this world, one of the worst things is where somebody do one thing wrong or, you know, uh, somebody may seem a little mentally off and then we just write them off and don't try to help them at all, you know? And, and it's like, where's the love if we're not trying to transmute that energy and actually help those people by showing them love instead of showing them hate and making them, you know, if, if not making the situation worse, like making, because two, if that person doesn't uh, manifest like how, how you treat like somebody who needs uh, love and you treat them wrong, if that doesn't manifest in this lifetime, that suppressed energy uh, come back in the next time, you know, uh, just as quote unquote evil or, you know, misunderstood the next time. But it's definitely a... Uh, dealing with healing old wounds so definitely on that level that's why that's all, all these things are coming out in hollywood you know the pedophilia and all these rape and sexual assault situations all this is coming to the light and again this doesn't mean like oh well that mean that the pedophile shouldn't go to jail no no <laughs> like <laughs> that's another aspect as we sign our soul contracts again that comes with the role the soul knew like, all right, damn, not only I signed up to do this, quote unquote, this this thing that's considered extremely evil in this uh, in this storybook we're about to go into, but I also have to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? I also have to deal with the consequences that this physical matrix is going to give me as well. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, there's all that whole overstanding of that. And we need to start having more of that overstanding of soul contracts and us coming down like so, so we could stop having this old ignorant stance of well, why the baby had to die why the baby had to die the baby signed a soul contract to come to this motherfucker for about excuse my diction because i want to get rid of that i want to stop using that word but for lack of a better word this this uh this baby came down to say i want to see what it feels like to be here for five minutes or for a day or for a month or two months or you know however long you know what i'm saying and then bam and then as it goes back to the transition then you know what next lifetime i want to see what it feels like to be the mom of that baby that passes you know that transitions early you know oh all right next life i want to see what it feels like to be the cousin of that being you know but it's just us going through those different uh different those little perceptions of you know of living, you know, uh, on a different uh, incarnation allows for us to learn these different levels. So again, that's where the healing, uh, that's where the healing comes in it. You know, but the, the the healing aspect is matter of fact, and two on an energetic level, that's the mathematics of energy. Where when you give an off a healing vibe, you know, so say for instance, people who don't forgive people. That's why they got all this energy, like, uh, and they stay, you know, because literally, like, on a science of energy, like, where they don't transmute their energy so that it stays bottled up and it's suppressed energy, and they end up being tormented by not forgiving that person that, you know, may have touched on them as a little kid or whatever. Of course, you know, again, that's moralistically, you know, we see these things, and I just say, see, you know, in this physical realm we agree that those things are going to be you know frowned upon in this timeline whatever whatever but it doesn't mean to uh to to uh 
how could I say, to throw those energies under the bus and not, you know, not send some healing energy towards them. Because sending healing energy towards somebody and supporting somebody is a whole different thing. Like, I send healing energy towards racist uh, Ku Klux Klan people all the time, but do I support what they do? No, but I send them healing energy all the time. You know, like, I send, I send people healing energy and don't necessarily have to agree with, you know, what they did or what they're doing in this physical matrix. So that's another thing to keep in mind. With uh, dealing with the blue moon, we're transmuting those energies, you know, uh, most importantly, honestly, uh, you know, but uh, and I say most important because another thing too that's going on is us again uh, stepping into being more, stepping into that heart space and not caring about, you know, what others think and, you know, and that's why they transmute these energies again, though, because when you heal your old wounds, when these old wounds are not healed, they're in your consciousness and you can what people think about these things. That's why you're keeping them to yourself too as well. So again, in full circle is about stepping up to that heart place and, you know, that soul purpose and, and being, you know, from the heart and, and listening to that heart's intuition and that divine feminine within ourselves that's closer to that intuition because it's open with emotions, you know what I'm saying? It, it, and being open with emotions is another thing too in which I have to... Uh, a few of my videos, I, I, I speak up on this, but I want to start doing it again because I was given a reminder where a lot of people see me with a peaceful demeanor and things of this nature and think that I may not clown or say a curse word or things of this nature. And it's like, no, I clown and do, you know, do other things, which at one point in my growth, I thought it was about being like super, you know, like that, but not, I overstood. But, you know, don't, don't, uh, and, but, and it's why too, though, well, for one, you shouldn't just watch one or two somebody videos and just oh I think I know everything about them now you know that's why I tell people watch all of my work you could get all of the aspects of it but anyway with uh feeling angry and crying and things of this nature like is our right to get angry is our right to cry and feel emotions I tell people look at kids kids is uh, 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 you know, like when we come from, from source fresh from being a kid before we taught anything, you know, a kid cries and rage and throw a little toy down when he can't fit the square into the circle piece. You're like, oh, this universe is stupid. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like that's that's cool because he's being, he's fully being in that moment. And that's another thing for us to start learning and realizing it's okay to be uh, fully like uh, with these aspects that in certain spiritual teachings that's considered negative, like anger and, you know, uh, showing vulnerability and things of this nature. Nothing is wrong with that. It's all right to, uh, to deal with the emotions, you know, and it's all right to feel anger or feel, you know, uh, like, uh, I just said the word, but to, to cry or whatever the case may be, it's all right to express yourself. This is about being fully, you know, because again, too, that's where your intuition and your psychic abilities is heightened when you just be in and your emotions and you're not like, er, and all strong and masculine and er about it, you know what I'm saying? Because again, of course, we maintain our masculinity, but we're also embracing the divine feminine energy as well. And that's also uh, dealing with the sensitivity of emotions, you know. So we definitely want to uh, deal with transmuting a lot of... Uh, old wounds and uh transmuting just a lot of emotional energy because uh again nothing is wrong with you know dealing with the emotions we wasn't given emotions energy in motion to not deal with it. you know what i'm saying like that okay too that's where your intuition come because if you realize like when somebody asks you hey uh so and so let's go here you want to go over here you no, know, now you could either go on your logic and analyze everything. All right, this person said Foot Locker. Foot Locker is a place where you get shoes. And, this, uh, and you could go through all these logical aspects. Or when somebody asks you, hey, so-and-so, you want to go here? And you sit on it. And you feel. You just stop for a second and you feel what your heart feeling. And your heart say... Hell yeah, I'm feeling that spot. Let's go. You know, then it's let's go. It's, it, you know, it didn't take no, well, what's over there? Who's going to be over there? How's the weather? 
what the food tastes like. Ugh. It's like my heart say go because it say go. And the other aspects, I know it's going to line up because I trust the universe. You know, and you start to see how that lines up, you know, getting away from that logic and just lining up with that heart. And one more thing again before I go, just again with that shadow self kicking kicking up like it used to, uh, uh, kicking up like it was uh, for the soul eclipse in uh, August in 2017. Don't panic. It's kind of just showing its its little head one more time as it's kind of like bowing out, you know what I'm saying? And which to each his own, you know, some of us, it may be a little stronger because you've been a little more lazy at dealing with it or whatever the case may be. But honestly, if you're, if you're to this point, it's because you're doing some kind of work. You know, you're moving forward in some way, form or fashion. We're all moving forward at a different pace and in a different manner, you know, as well. So, you know, and that's why it's always, uh, always taught or just said that, you know, don't compare your growth to nobody. Stop comparing and looking at the next person and wondering what they doing and how fast they ascending and what they doing. Like, just be, do, trust your heart. Your, it's all about your universe. How can you govern as above, so below? How can you become a God that governs, uh, uh, you know, a planet? Or how could you be a planet or govern a solar system if you don't know how to govern and deal with yourself first and foremost? You know, you worried about all this other stuff and your, your, your planet is malfunctioning. You know, so it's another aspect. And, and uh, also uh, remembering that it's about taming the ego and integrating it with the higher self and not necessarily killing the ego. Of course, we use the word ego death because, uh, for lack of a better terminology, when you have some of these psychedelic journeys, it does kill that identification with your body. You know, like it does kill that aspect of thinking that, oh, I'm Carl Ray and I was born of call Ray Sr. and Barber and, you know, and these things and this and, you know, like, ah, that's just the storyline of my little physical being in this one timeline, but I am a, a being of many timelines, you know, and of uh, way more existences. So, you know, it's more of a killing the ego of just thinking, identifying as a limit, uh, a human with limits, you know, and really understanding that you are a limit, limitless vibration, you know. But again, taming that e taming the ego and integrating it with the higher self. You know, I I, I thought about the analogy like uh, where you want to give your higher self the the first controller, the number one controller, and then you want to give the like you, how you give the little cousin the second controller. You know what I'm saying? Because the first player kind of controls where the you know the game goes in that sense. You know, and the, the second person, they could act up and do all kind of other stuff, but it still doesn't throw the bigger picture off, you know. Uh, like playing Sonic, and you could be Sonic on the first player, and your little cousin could be Tails, and Tails could venture off screen and whatever, but the game is really just making sure it follows Sonic, you know. Same, same analogy, you know what I'm saying? You want to uh, let the higher self have that first controller, and the ego have that second controller. <laughs> tame that ego and transmute you know and 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 and, and uh be fearless and be uh be lighthearted, be joyous right now you know what i'm saying because these energies are being transmuted and removed from our uh from our physical being in auric field you know again that leo energy that joyous kid like energy you know coming to uh you know tra transmute all, all the, uh, all the aspects of our shadow self, all those, those thought forms and things that no longer serve in us. So now, you know, again, that last little wash up to be washed, you know, to be rinsed away, you know, basically being brought to light. Cause you know, it's, it's like cleaning the car. If I'm cleaning, washing the car, or I'm wiping the car down at night. I could know, like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna wipe the fullness of this car, but. Without the light, I'm not being able to actually see. So I could see, oh wait, hold on. Even though I'm wiping the whole car and I know I'm cleaning it, but it, they got a little smudge by the tire that I need to put a little elbow grease on, you know what I'm saying? So that 
that that's the aspect of uh why the shadow self is kind of coming up like on those last eclipse it's like it's like the light being shined on that smudge saying all right hold on though you, you could clean that just a little bit better and that's something and two also your high self showing you that that, that this that it is something that you truly want to clean up a little bit better so let's go ahead on and you know recognize it and make sure we we keep in keeping the growth going in that area so that this aspect never comes back again you know but peace happy now now is the vibrate the rate at which we vibe in when i go too far in the future when i go too far in the past you know i see it right now <laughs> Blessings. Peace.